And then for n equals 1, we have n equals 4 digits, and we use 4 edits. And for n equals 2, we add these two vertices and these 4 edits. So we were able to prove that all of these events are homoids by showing that they can be built to any length in stages. So I'll we'll use these with 2, for example. So at stage 0, we add 1 vertex and then 1 zero. And then stage one, we have two more vertices, so one and two, along with the ratio of So we have zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, and one plus two is one, three is zero. And then for the next stage, we have two more vertices, so one, three, and four, along with these four edges. So now this, as it leads to zero, but it's now three, this we're modding out by seven. And this is equal to zero. And then for our final stage, we have two vertices of five and six. And these four edges. And again, this takes you to seven and this is even now. So we know that at every stage of our building, the graph was harmonious. So we can say that all of these events will be harmonious. Lots of infinite harmonious rhythms. We begin to wonder how harmonious rhythms could apply to infinite graphs and which infinite graphs would be harmonious. An infinite graph is harmonious if we can label the vertices 0 to infinity. We can label the edges the sum of the vertex labels next to them, so we use 1 to infinity. So now let's extend this event to infinity graphs. So we define P as the union of all of these events for all of them. So basically, this would be the infinity graph D. We take our new event from the four and just continue it out forever. So we were also able to show that the infinity graph D is one of and this is kind of intuitive. Since we proved that all of these events are harmonious, you can do that on the stage. And it makes sense that if you just continue out broader, it will still be harmonious. So here would be our ground harmonious web that we need to get to you. We have the same web layer as these two, and you just continue out broader. Once you can look at your harmonious web layer, an interesting variation of the definition of harmonious web layer is the low layer harmonious web and the graph of E edges and D vertices is looking in limits. If we can label the vertices 0, it would be minus 1. But now the edge labels around each vertex must represent the number of edges it has. So here's an example of the graph. So first, we start by getting the edge labels the same way we did before by adding the first, first vertex levels next to them. So 3, 2, 7, 1, 3, 5. And now, for each vertex, we're going to consider the edge level next to it and mod the number of edges around it. So for this, for this vertex, it is one edge around it. So we do three mod one, which is zero. For this vertex, it is three edges around it. So the side will be three mod three, which is zero. And then one mod three, which is one. And two mod three, which is two. So notice that this is the number zero, one, and two around it. So this is how it represents the degree of the number of edges has around it. So if you want two, then you have a degree of three. So then for this vertex, we have one mod three, which is one, three mod three, which is zero, and five mod three, which is two. So again, it represents that it has three edges around it. And then we can continue this for the rest of the vertices. And since it has, if they, all the vertices are happy, with the numbers that are around them, that is the most harmonious way they can graph. Okay, I'll just settle the harmonious graph that we found. We started our investigation of this type of labeling, which was simple spot and graph, the path. And we will show that all paths um, with length divisible by four are harmonious. So we show this by induction. So the first step of induction is that we have to show that the first domino in our series is going to fall. So for us, our first domino was that the path of the four is what we have on this. So here is P sub four. And so as you can see, here are the edge levels, and here are the local levels around each person. So it is what we have on this. And now we have to show that if the end domino is going to fall on our sequence, then the next domino is going to fall too. And if we can show that, then we know that all the dominoes will fall. So we assume that the nth domino, or that p sub 4 n, is what we have to use. And we have to show that the next domino, or that p sub 
important was for each of these little units. So here is these important. So this is that because we're just labeled 0 through 4 and minus 1 must have been used since we were assuming that these are four is low real numbers. Now we go to these are was 4. And so the labels <coughs> can be labeled as the ones in, from 4 and to 4 plus 3, which are the new labels we have added, that have the opposite parity as this vertex. So if this vertex is odd, then you label the two even numbers. If it's even, you will be able to odd numbers. When you do the opposite for these two versions, you will be same 30, is this four minus one. And so now we've used all labels from zero to four plus three, and the graph piece of four plus four is a little bit ridiculous. So then by induction, we know that all piece of four random are looking at Alright, so here's an example of passing. <coughs> So here's piece of four over here in that. And then here's piece of eight. So you can see that after the three, we have two even vertex labels and two odd ones. So the two evens are an opposite parity to three, and two odds are the same parity. Then we do the same for piece of twelve. Again, add two evens and two odds. And we can do that from it. So using this theorem, we are going to consider passive anything. And we're also going to show that all the paths are the So here is an example for each piece of paths. Here's a piece of two, then a piece of three. We add a two on one side, and we add a three on the other side, and then a four on that side. And the trick is to continue with our pattern of even, even, on, on, even, even, on, on, forever. So we can pull all paths in that pattern, and it will be looking at now, graphs is called the complete five part type of graphs. The graph is a five part type if it is possible to divide its vertices into two disjoint sets such that there are no edges between any two vertices in the same set. And a complete five part type graph is one that is five part type in that for every pair of graph vertices, there are rotations. And it's in a case of n n, where n are the sizes. So, for an example of a complete five part type graph, the graph k that are 10, 10. So the top vertices, there are 10 vertices at top. So that would be one disjoint set where there are no edges connecting them. Then the bottom vertices would be <coughs> the other set where there are no edges. But then all the other edges connecting vertices between sets are there. So it's a complete by five set graph. So we wonder if these kind of graphs are the only And in fact, they are. So, for example, for a case of 5, 3, so because there's the top, there's 5 versus the top, and 3 on bottom, to be able to become nice labeling. So, considering the vertex 0, and we know that 5, 6, and 7 are going to be the edge labels around 0, so then mod 3, those will be 2, 0, and 1, respectively. So, and then you can do that for any vertex. So, like for six, you can say zero, one, two, three, four, all modified, are just going to be zero, one, two, three, four, which is exactly fits the definition of what we're going to do. So this applies to all vertices in the graph. And so this is right. I'll say it instantly. As we did, among us. And if any graph is located in the least space, you can lay on the vertices 0 through infinity. And the edge labels around each vertex still represents the number of edges and has a kind of the same way. So now we can start the semi infinite path, which is just a path which extends forever in one direction. So that's a semi infinite path. And we will show that the semi infinite path is located in the least using the same labeling that we have for five paths. You can even odd odd, you can even odd odd just around. Alright, other findings are made. So we suspected, but we're not able to prove, that all infinite trees of gender and degree two are located in limits. So here is an infinite tree. Trees look like trees, 
um, that formal definitions that they have no cycles, so you don't have any circles or anything in them. And it's one way to extend forever. Uh, so we're pretty sure that all of the issues like this are open. Also, we were able to prove that the infinite loading money stuff can be built from a finite loading money stuff. So formally, if you assume G is a finite looking money graph at least one vertex of G1, then there is just an infinite graph G tilde which contains G that is looking at the So here's an example of this. Here we have a finite graph G with a vertex of degree one. So we need to say this. And you can trust me that this is what you can so that um, so also notice that our maximum label is eight. So now if we want, we're going to try to build a path off of the six. So right now we have even, even, <coughs> even. So now we add another even. The next even that we can use is ten. Now we have two odds, so nine and eleven, which are the next ones we can use. And then the next even we can use is twelve, and then we can use that. So if you go forever like this, then we have an infinite locating harmonics graph which contains our original graph. Uh, so, conclusion, for harmonious labelings, we saw that the graph D to that is harmonious, then the infinite graph D is harmonious, so there is easier if you want to eat. And then for locating harmonious labels, <coughs> we saw that all paths typically drive parts like graphs are locating harmonious, and that we can build an infinite Right, here are my references. So the number three is the survey that has over 2,000 papers about graph labeling reference. And then one, two, and four are the various, seven various applications of graph labeling. Right, my acknowledgments, I wish to thank Kim Miller, my mentor, for all the help of giving me my research paper presentation. I'd like to thank Dr. Oscar Levin um, for his help in my research. I want to thank the Macy family uh, for sponsoring my VA side and also the Union Pacific, Union Pacific Foundation for sponsoring my VA. <coughs> I'd like to thank Sabita for her help providing my paper presentation in this group. And then I would like to thank Lori Ball and the rest of that besides that as well. And <laughs> Why are they significant? Okay, why? Like, how is it different from other like graphs? Like, what makes our harmonious labeling? Yeah. So basically, our harmonious labeling. So a graph is harmonious if we can label the vertices like zero through going back to the. <coughs> <laughs> if you think about the example of the reason, there were four edges and five or five or so if you label you can label the zero to four so that when you add the edge labels and then mod out by the number of edges and the edge labels will also be zero through four or whatever, then it's one of But there are a lot of graphs that wouldn't be one of those. And if you if, if you can do that, then it's up as a basic step. With what applications would you have? So, specifically, infinite harmonious graph labels don't really have much direct application other than just understanding the infinite graph and harmonious labeling. But for harmonious, for finite harmonious labeling, then, so. <laughs> There was this thing where there were like radio towers that were, and then the connect, the radio towers are like the vertices in a graph. And then the connections between the radio towers are the edges. So it turned out that they would actually, they actually use harmonious labeling to make it more secure or something. With that, I'm not entirely sure on the details, but it turned out to be useful. I think it was true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so the proof that I have had to prove out was basically like we start at the bottom, label it, and we go off some, label that, label it and stuff around it, and then we show that we can just repeat that for the graph all the time. And we'll, we'll use all the labels and we'll use uh, local new like, what, what? Uh, we just weren't sure about it, like, entirely sure. I mean, I was sure. He was sure. I was not sure. So, you are um, so, like to prove that to me is something else? Well, you can prove it by an algorithm, which is basically like saying, like, like label this, like in this, in stages, kind of, like how I had to prove for, um, the one of the first two stages. And then, so you can be like, label the first or next this, then you can label the second or next this, I keep going with this method. I want to say this like, uh, like I say that was that's pretty much how you label it. Like you wouldn't label like all of them like at once. Uh, change on the profile on that, Jenny.